Hey guys, it's Nick. Well, the Evergrande saga continues. Today, ratings agency Fitch officially downgraded insolvent property developers China Evergrande and Kaiser Group, saying they have defaulted on offshore bonds. Now, this has been expected for a few months, but instead of this news causing a Lehman Brothers type reaction to financial markets, it has actually been a pretty muted response. So let's take a look at what happens next and see how big of a problem this could be for China and look at if it will even be a problem for the rest of the world. Evergrande has about $300 billion in total debt. Most of it is to Chinese government owned banks, but it does have about $19 billion in its dollar denominated debt to foreign investors. So these downgrades to so-called restricted default status came days after both Evergrande and Kaiser failed to make bond interest payments, even though they have not officially announced defaults. Fitch said Evergrande did not respond to its request for confirmation on coupon payments worth $82.5 million that were due last month, with the 30-day grace period ending this week, and so they assumed that they were not paid. And this non-payment has triggered an event of default on Evergrande's bonds and its other U.S. dollar notes will become due immediately and payable if the bond trustee or holders of at least 25% in aggregate amount declare so, Fitch said. So the same cross-default is true for Kaiser, which has note maturities totaling $2.8 billion next year and another $2.2 to $3.2 billion of maturities each year between 2023 and 2025. So most bonds, even your home mortgage, have acceleration clauses that say if you miss one payment, then the whole balance is due immediately. So if Evergrande defaults on one bond, then all the other bondholders can demand payment in full immediately. Now, of course, you can't get blood from a stone, so they will try to work with them as much as possible to try to get as much money back as they can. And Evergrande last week said it planned to forge ahead with a restructuring of its debt. So to give you an idea of just how important real estate is in China, let's take a look at this chart. So this is a chart of asset classes by country. And in China, the residential property market makes up $62 trillion of their wealth compared to the stock market, which is only $13 trillion. So five times more in property than in the stock market. And that's not the case in the U.S. where there's more in the stock market than there is in property. And one thing to note here, almost 20% of that residential property is empty or is inventory. So the question now for the Chinese government is how aggressive will they be to try to contain this from taking down the economy while at the same time not looking like they are bailing out the rich? It seems Beijing has already blinked because the People's Bank of China reversed its long-running position of avoiding excess stimulus when it unexpectedly cut reserve requirement ratios and proceeded to hint that more is coming. So this means that banks can be more loose with loans, which could help out struggling developers. And the PBOC governor said that rights of Evergrande shareholders and creditors would be fully respected based on their legal seniorities and the risk caused by a few Chinese real estate companies in the short term would not undermine Hong Kong's capital market. Meanwhile, Reuters reports that Kaiza is expected to soon sign a non-disclosure agreement with Lazard, the advisor of a group of bondholders. And the bondholders hold over 25% of Kaiza's $12 billion in offshore bonds. Kaiza said it was open to talks on forbearance, but declined to comment on details. So what happens to Evergrande next? Well, looking at this chart of their dollar bonds, it looks like the worst has already happened. They were around 100 cents in around June of 2021. Now they're trading at 20 cents, and they've been that way since around September. So this news hasn't really changed anybody's perception that they will receive about 20 cents on the dollar for their dollar bonds. And Evergrande said in a brief exchange filing on Friday that it plans to actively engage with offshore creditors on a restructuring plan. The company is planning to include all of its offshore public bonds 
and private debt obligations in the restructuring. So it looks like Evergrande has become the biggest victim of President Xi's efforts to crack down on the freewheeling real estate sector and curb property speculation. As Bloomberg notes, Beijing's reluctance to bail out the property developer sends a clear signal that the Communist Party won't tolerate massive debt buildups that threaten financial stability. It's also a signal that billionaires who made their fortunes off unviable businesses will not be spared. But the question now is whether the government can limit the fallout. And so the bonds of many smaller, lower rated real estate firms have also plunged in recent weeks, driving Chinese junk bond yields to a record yield above 20%. So here's a chart of China's dollar junk bond yields. So as the bond prices fall, their yields increase and they have increased to almost 25% and now they're sitting around 22%. Now, for Evergrande to have a chance at paying creditors as much as possible, they need to be able to complete their ongoing projects and sell them to people at normal prices. If they have to discount them heavily because people think their projects were rushed to finish with subpar quality, then creditors will get back much less money. Now, that's going to be hard with the housing market already slowing down for all developers. Contract sales by the country's top 100 developers plunged 38% in November from a year earlier to 751 billion won, and that's sharper than the 32% drop in the previous month. Now, in a sign that Beijing is very concerned about the housing market fallout, China's central bank released 1.2 trillion won, or about $188 billion, of liquidity via a cut in the reserve requirement ratio for most banks, a move which, while expected, came too fast and surprised most analysts. So that was the tipping point, and shortly after, the government pledged to support the housing market to better meet reasonable needs, adding to signs that it will ease the real estate curbs. As part of the upcoming nationalization of Evergrande, officials are starting to take a more hands-on role at Evergrande. And Chairman Hoi was summoned by the Guangdong government last week after the company said it plans to work with creditors on a restructuring plan. Authorities in Evergrande's home province will send a working group to urge the builder to manage risks as well as strengthen internal controls and ensure normal operations. And the company said that state representatives have taken the majority of seats on a new risk management committee. So basically, the government is now in control of this restructuring and who gets paid and how they get paid. So will these problems spill over into the global markets? Well, the Federal Reserve last month warned that fragility in China's commercial real estate sector could spread to the U.S. if it deteriorates dramatically. China's real estate sector makes up almost half of the world's distressed dollar-denominated debt. For foreign bondholders, an Evergrande default is likely to start a prolonged battle for repayment. Chinese authorities have made it clear that the company should put home buyers, suppliers, and retail investors who bought the firm's wealth management products ahead of debt holders. And about 1.6 million home buyers have put down deposits with Evergrande for properties that have yet to be completed. So they're going to focus on those first. No matter what the outcome, offshore bondholders are the last in line for payment and are certainly going to have to accept haircuts, possibly significant ones, said Andrew Collier, Managing Director of Orient Capital Research in Hong Kong. Now, outside of the bondholders, there could be less demand for building commodities like steel, copper, and concrete if the home building in China continues to slow down. But when the stock market bubble in the U.S. pops, it will most likely be because of people finally realizing our own problems here. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching, guys.